G'day everyone! As you know, it's that wonderful time of year, summer, where we collectively take a deep breath and smell the apocalypse. Here are a few examples of this summer's extreme weather. In Japan, record-breaking floods killed over 200 people. In Sweden, they have the worst drought in over 74 years. Fires in Greece killed almost 100 people. And in Los Angeles, temperatures reached 111 degrees, which is the hottest since records began. Now, I know what you're thinking, 111 degrees. Down under, that just means we finally get to wear shorts. But in LA, it's actually kind of hot. Now, if you've been glued to the news or just glued to your couch from all that sweat, you've likely heard all about all this extreme weather. The media loves to cover natural disasters. The what, the where, the how, the how many deaths. But what they haven't been talking about is what's causing it. Scientists have been pretty clear about what's causing the world to break so many weather records. Burning fossil fuels, like coal and oil, has released heat-trapping gases. That trapped heat has, duh, made the Earth hotter, and also drier and more susceptible to extreme weather events. So while there's always been fires and floods and droughts and heat waves, because of climate change, they're now more intense and we're seeing more of them. To you and me, that connection might seem obvious. Hot things are happening because our planet is getting hotter and in other news, water is wet. But the media has been a little hesitant to properly spell this connection out. A recent report by Media Matters found that of 127 corporate broadcast news segments that covered the early July heatwave, only one mentioned climate change as a factor. Even NPR and the New York Times, both of whom employ journalists specifically to report on climate change, failed to mention climate change in their reports on the heatwave. Though the New York Times did eventually update their story on Greece's wildfires to add that the extreme conditions are in line with patterns that scientists attribute to climate change. So we got there in the end. But critics, and me, say that these emissions can affect how Americans view global warming and its impact on their lives, leaving Americans uninformed. But if you think that's where this rabbit hole ends, oh, you are wrong. So, so, so wrong. 2017 was another record year of extreme climate events, and yet the corporate broadcast news networks only mentioned the link between climate change and these disasters four times in the entire calendar year of 2017. And of the time they spent talking about climate change, nearly 80% of that revolved around the Trump administration. Now, the president believes that global warming is a hoax. So, even if he somehow turned into a person who didn't lie all the damn time, he'd still be wrong on climate change. So focusing on his beliefs and policies in their climate change coverage can produce shoddy reporting, as it did when CBS and PBS featured guests who flatly denied that human activity causes climate change. Sure, it's good journalism to feature people with different but valid viewpoints. But the idea that climate change is a hoax is not a valid viewpoint. Scientists all agree on this. It's like questioning whether gravity is real. You technically could debate whether gravity exists, but as long as I'm standing here and not floating about in the sky, there's only one valid viewpoint. And it's misleading for the media outlets to pretend otherwise, because it gives credibility to a false viewpoint. What journalists need to do here is basically their jobs inform us about climate change and the role it plays in our daily lives. Not by giving credibility to climate deniers, but by painting a full picture that our planet is heating up and that's causing more extreme weather. Maybe more extreme weather reporting could involve collaborations from climate reporters. Lesser reporting leaves us uninformed, or worse, misinformed. And being misinformed is how the public end up making catastrophic decisions, like being the only nation to pull out of the Paris Climate Accord. But what do you guys think? Do you think that reporters should include climate change in their reporting of weather-related events? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.